Well, hello, scrappers, and welcome back to my channel. A short time ago, I released a video about processing the cement copper that I generate in my waste treatment system. And I didn't know what to do with it. I'd been throwing it out for a long time. I finally decided that was a big waste. I wanted to find something to do with the cement copper. So I started making bars, started casting bars out of it. And then, just out of curiosity, I started doing electrolytic refining of some of those bars to get pure copper. And in the bottom of the beaker that I was using for my refining cell, there were a lot of anode slimes. And I'll, I'll, show, you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, I wish I'd filmed it, but I didn't. Uh, when I was done with that cell, I filtered the liquid in it so I could reuse the, uh, the copper nitrate electrolyte. And there was a lot of crud in the bottom of that speaker. More than I would have expected had developed. And just for funsies, you know, just on a lark, I took the filter with all that crud and I dissolved it in a beaker of aqua regia just to see what I'm going to get, if anything. I wasn't expecting much. This was just, you know, like on a lark, an experiment. But let me show you something. Let me get a little of this liquid. I only need a drop or two. Come over here. Put it on a spoon. And then let me come over here and get some of this stannous chloride solution. And put it on here. Holy moly, will you look at that? Those anode slimes contain gold. And I didn't even do, you know, I didn't even let the cell run that long. There wasn't that much material there. I wasn't expecting to get, you know, anything. This was just kind of like, you know, an experiment, a lark. I wasn't expecting that I would get anything. So, but yeah, there's gold in that stuff. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue processing this. I'll wait and make sure everything in the beaker is fully dissolved. I'll filter it, um, drop the gold, and we'll see how much gold we get. So, I'm really starting to think that this, uh, this electrolytic refining of my crude copper bars that are made from the cement copper in my waste bucket it could actually produce a lot of extra gold. So maybe the, the process could actually pay for itself. And maybe even make a profit. That would be nice. So anyway, um, we're going to let this cook for a little while. And then we'll come back and we'll process it the rest of the way and see how much gold we get out of it. Alright, so this has been cooking for a while. I think the reaction's done. Now, I did not know how much nitric acid to use on this. There was a fair amount of solid in the filter after I... Um, after I filtered off the anode slimes, there was a fair amount of solids in the filter, so I hit it pretty hard with nitric acid. I imagine there's probably a little over nitric. So I got here saturated solution of uh, sulfamic acid, so let's see what happens. Oh yeah, a little bit of a reaction there. Okay, yeah, a little over nitric, but I was expecting that. We'll just neutralize that nitric acid. There we go. All right. Let me uh, wash the remaining sulfamic acid out of this beaker. Make sure we're good and denoxed. Alright, and I'll get some ice and we'll cool it down. Well, I forgot to hit record before I dumped the ice in, but the ice is in, so it's cooling down. Um, if the ice melts quick enough, I'll probably get this filtered and try and drop whatever gold's in it tonight. Otherwise, it may have to wait until tomorrow because uh, the wife and I are going out to dinner tonight with another couple. And it's getting late in the afternoon, so hopefully the ice will melt quick. And uh, 
to be able to get the gold dropped and by tomorrow morning we'll be able to see how much gold we got. Alrighty, let's get this gunk filtered. See if we can get the uh, get the SMB in it and get the gold dropping before I have to shut down for the night. I'm getting a little bit smarter in my old age. Just a little bit here and there. Got that rattle trap of a vacuum pump off of the top of the bench now. So it doesn't shake everything. <laughs> Should have done that years ago. Obviously there's some copper in here. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, probably some of those copper dendrites on the uh, on the uh, the copper cathode probably fell off and wound up in the bottom in the uh, anode slimes. So, and there's probably other copper compounds in there too. So, and it's probably going to take a while. It looks like the filter's plugging up already. So I won't make you watch the whole process. I'll just be back when it's done. Okay, this filtration is going ridiculously slowly. I mean that filter is like plugged up immediately by something and the, the liquid coming through is a little cloudy. I suspect some silver chloride. Don't know for sure but that's what I'm suspecting. Well, probably with some silver in there as well as some gold. At the rate it's going it's going to take a month. So I might have to uh, figure out a different way to filter this. Okay, so I've got my ridiculously large Buckner funnel out on top of this little flask here. We'll see if the higher surface area of the Buckner funnel helps filter this quicker. Or if it's just going to clog up too. Just try and get the liquid over and leave the solids behind so I don't clog up the filter too quickly. Well, it's, it's filtering. Yeah, it's clogging up too, but maybe I can get the liquid through. We'll see. Okay, it's filtering. It's just going to take a while. It's it's a little faster than with the other funnel, but not much. Um, okay, note to self, in the future, don't go straight to Aqua Regia with the anode slimes. Probably a good idea would be a, a treatment with nitric acid first to dissolve any any copper, any silver, any other uh, free metals in there besides the gold and the uh, and the PGMs just so I don't have so much contamination from copper and silver because I'm pretty sure we got silver chloride going on here it's 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 cloudy it's got the look of silver chloride now normally I would run the liquid through the filter a second time to get the silver chloride out because now that the filters loaded up it will strip the silver chloride out but I'm not running it through this filter again. Uh-uh. It would take till midnight. It might take till midnight to get through the first time. We'll see. Let's see, what time is it? Now I gotta be ready to go to dinner in less than two hours. So hopefully I'll get it through once. All right, well, it's the next day. This actually took so long to filter that uh, we were ready to leave to go out to dinner. And I just disconnected it from the pump and threw it in here. Ooh, isn't that appetizing? Yummy. But uh, finally it's done. So uh, let me get that stuff into a beaker and we'll see if we can drop the gold here in the fume hood. All right, I've got the liquid in a beaker. Now, maybe it was a trick of the late afternoon light or something, but this stuff does not look as cloudy as it did yesterday. It, 
if it's cloudy at all, it's just got a very slight cloudiness to it. So I'm not going to bother refiltering it. I'm just going to see if I can drop whatever gold's in it out. And uh, I'll just put it with my dirty impure gold, you know, that's going to need multiple refinings. Because there's probably going to be some, uh, some solids in there. But uh, let me get this going. So I don't have to smell this stuff. that and see if we get any kind of reaction. Just let it sit for a while. Okay, it's been a little while and this has turned black. Actually, I think what we've got going on here is the gold is coming out of solution, but it's coming out as a microfine colloidal suspension of a very fine gold dust. Um, it's starting to clear very slowly from the top. There's a clear green layer a few millimeters thick at the top. And there's a very fine dusting of gold starting to settle out on the bottom. So this is super, super fine stuff. And you know, I'm not the least bit surprised because those anode slimes would have contained pretty much every metal on the periodic table, including, I'm sure, a lot of the stuff that really interferes with the precipitation of gold, like tin. Um, certainly there's going to be a lot of copper, some iron, zinc, um, oh, tin and lead and who knows what else was, was in there. There would have been a little bit of everything except for maybe plutonium, okay? And who knows, there might have been a few atoms of that knocking around in there. But uh, I will just let this sit for a few days and hopefully this colloidal gold will eventually settle out. You know, if not, I can just filter the bulk of the liquid and catch this gold on a filter. I'm sure there's not very much gold there, just a little bit, but still. What this tells me is that getting this much gold from such a small amount of anode slimes from electrolytic refining of partial electrolytic refining of one of the bars I poured out of my waste bucket cement copper tells me I'm getting way too much gold into the waste bucket. So I am not... Uh, either not keeping enough copper in the uh, in the stock pot or there's not enough circulation in the stock pot to get the liquid in contact with the copper so that it cements out all the precious metals. You know, I was expecting some precious metals to make it over into uh, the waste bucket. But what this is telling me is there's way too much of it making it over in there. And up till now, I've just been throwing away my waste bucket material. So that stops now. Okay, there's clearly gold in that stuff, so I'm not throwing away any more of it. Um, so what can I do to, to prevent this from happening in the future? Well, let's take a look at something. So I know that these bars are contaminated with gold and silver. There was a lot of silver chloride in that stuff that was clogging up the filter. So obviously I'm not just getting uh, gold into my waste bucket, I'm getting a significant amount of silver in there too. So I will probably need to work on preventing that from happening as well when I dump my waste uh, copper nitrate solutions in there. I've got to make sure that they are free of silver first. So, but the first thing I need to do is I just need to get more copper in the stock pot. So um, I'm going to put... Uh, several of these bars into the stock pot right now in a few minutes after I'm done filming this and I may add um, like a fish tank bubbler to it too just to circulate the liquid so that uh, it doesn't stagnate and, and, and every bit of it has a chance to get in, get in contact with some of the copper in there and since um, these, these bars are going to slowly dissolve in the stock pot any gold and precious metals they have in them will wind up back in the stock pot where they came from originally and hopefully there'll be uh, cement um, metals on the bottom of the stock pot and fairly easy to recover in the future. So hopefully by keeping the stock pot topped up with this copper and getting better circulation going, the liquid, the overflow liquid from the stock pot that I decant into the waste bucket will contain fewer 
precious metals in the future so that I wouldn't have to go to extraordinary lengths to uh, recover them. Although, the whole electrolytic refining thing is interesting and I'm sure no matter what I do, traces of precious metals are still going to make it into the waste bucket and the electrolytic will concentrate them in the anode slime so it may still be a worthwhile project in the future. But uh, yeah, I want to minimize the amount that goes over into the waste bucket and maximize the amount that stays in the stock pot so I can recover it more easily. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to put some of these bars in the stock pot right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, video interesting, informative, educational, whatnot. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Um, subscribe to see future videos and press that little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.